Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to cardiology lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nickham, I am a cardiologist and today we are going to learn something about the central nervous system control of cardiac function. So, let us begin. There are two mechanisms by which the cardiovascular function is controlled in the body. The first one refers to the neural control of the cardiovascular system which is mediated in many respects through the hormonal effects on the cardiovascular system. So, we are going to look at first the anatomy of the cardiovascular uh, central nervous system connections, then we are going to look at the physiology of uh, each one of these components and finally, look at some examples of uh, how the brain and the medulla controls the everyday hemodynamic changes that we see in response to any type of challenge. Now, let us look at the neural control of the cardiovascular system. We have the baroreceptors which are located in the aortic arch and also in the carotid uh, body and these baroreceptors sense the mean arterial pressure and any changes in the arterial pressure are going to send impulses to the medullary cardiovascular centers via the glossopharyngeal nerve and the vagus nerve. In response to that, the medullary centers namely cardio auxiliary or cardio inhibitory centers send efferent impulses to the heart and to the arterioles and venues to adjust the cardiac output, heart rate and blood pressure. The medulla also has a vasomotor center which acts on the vasomotor tone in the arterioles and in the venues and these effects are mediated through the sympathetic stimulation or inhibition or parasympathetic uh, stimulation or inhibition. Let us talk about physiology of uh, central nervous system control of uh, heart and its uh, functions. We mentioned about the baroreceptors. The baroreceptors as the name indicates, it responds to changes in blood pressure. If the blood pressure goes up, it stretches the aorta and the carotid uh, sinus or the body that uh, sends afferent impulses through the glossopharyngeal nerve and the vagus nerve to the medulla. And as I said in the medulla, the cardioregulatory centers namely cardio accelerator center and cardio inhibitory center along with the vasomotor center and there is also a chemoreceptor center located in the medulla oblongata which uh, regulate the cardiovascular functions through the sympathetic stimulation or inhibition, similarly parasympathetic stimulation or inhibition. The chemoreceptors on the other hand respond to changes in pH, oxygen saturation level and carbon dioxide pressure in the blood. Now, let us look at the hormonal control of cardiovascular system. Through the sympathetic system, we have the release of uh, epinephrine or adrenaline and norepinephrine or noradrenaline. Then we have a vasopressin which acts through the antidiuretic hormone. Then we have the renin angiotensin system which produces angiotensin 1 and 2 and as you know angiotensin 2 is one of the most potent vasoconstrictors. Similarly, we have thyroid hormones namely T3 and T4 which also increases heart rate and blood pressure. Then we have the atrial natriuretic peptide which has an effect based on the venous return to the right side of the heart. The sympathetic stimulation acts on the sinus node, the AV node and the peripheral arterioles and venules. There is an increase in heart rate, there is increase in contractility of the left and the right ventricles there is an increase in total systemic vascular resistance through vasoconstriction, there is an increase in central venous pressure and an elevated mean arterial pressure. These are all related to stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system through epinephrine 
or norepinephrine. Here is a diagrammatic representation of how the afferent impulses go from the aortic arch and the baroreceptors to the medulla oblongata to the cardiovascular center where it sends impulses through the cardio auxiliary nervous system namely the sympathetic system to, to stimulate the sinus node, the AV node and increase contractility of the left ventricle in addition to acting on the peripheral vascular systems. On the other hand, the parasympathetic system acts through the, the vagus by release of uh, acetylcholine which also acts on the, the sinus node, AV node and the peripheral arteries and veins along with the arterioles and venules. Unlike the sympathetic stimulation, parasympathetic stimulation leads to a decrease in heart rate. It causes vasodilatation in both the arteries and veins leading to profound hypotension. It decreases the systemic vascular resistance. It reduces the venous return and it also reduces the mean arterial pressure. Here is a little more expanded version of uh, the effects of uh, afferent impulses coming from various parts of the body. The arteries also have chemoreceptors which can activate the medulla along with the baroreceptors we talked about. Similarly, the motor cortex in the brain can also stimulate the medulla to br bring about sympathetic or parasympathetic uh, effects. Receptors within the muscle, exercising muscles also send signals to the medulla to activate the cardio auxiliary system. When the sympathetic system is uh, activated, it leads to it leads to vasodilatation in the active muscles. It leads to vasoconstriction in the splanchnic area, decreasing the vascular resistance, and it also increases the heart rate. It increases the contractility of the left ventricle, which leads to increase in stroke volume and cardiac output which leads to an increase in blood pressure. The venoconstriction leads to increased cardiac preload which also improves cardiac uh, stroke volume. So, here is a, a chart showing the effect of baroreceptors those that uh, respond to changes in the blood pressure which results in muscular vasoconstriction to reduce the blood supply to the muscles. It also leads to skin vasoconstriction and cardiac sympathetic uh, activity. Whereas, chemoreceptors, they increase the muscle vasoconstriction, they decrease the skin vasoconstriction and they also decrease the cardiac sympathetic activity. Now, let us take a scenario where we have a blood pressure of 200 over 120 millimeters of mercury. This increase in blood pressure both the systolic and the diastolic leads to stretching of the aorta and the carotid baroreceptors which send signals through the glossopharyngeal and the vagal nerves to the cardio inhibitory center and the cardio inhibitory center works through the parasympathetic system thus decreasing the heart rate decreasing the venous return and reducing the blood pressure. That is how a reflex mechanism is built in to counteract significant fluctuations in the blood pressure in a given patient at any time. Now, let us talk about the chemoreceptors. The chemoreceptors are the ones which respond to the changes in the arterial pH oxygen saturation and carbon dioxide saturation. If there is an increase in carbon dioxide or a decrease in uh, oxygen saturation, it activates the chemoreceptors uh, both located in the aortic arch and also in the carotid body. They send afferent signals to the medulla oblongata. In turn, medulla oblongata activates cardio auxiliary center which stimulates the sympathetic system leading to an increase in heart rate, increase in cardiac output, 
thus driving the carbon dioxide out of the body and increasing the oxygenation of the blood in the lungs. Let us look at a scenario where we have volume expansion as we see in patients with heart failure. This volume expansion leads to an increase in venous pressure. This increase in venous pressure coming to the right heart stretches the right atrium. It releases the atrial natriuretic peptide which leads to inhibition of the antidiuretic hormone. Thus, there is an increase in diuresis which leads to reduction in blood volume and thus it reduces the symptoms related to congestion in patients with heart failure. Let us look at the neural control of capillary blood flow. The sympathetic stimulation of the alpha receptors leads to vasodilatation whereas stimulation of the beta receptors leads to vasoconstriction. However, the vasoconstriction activity by the beta adrenergic receptors would override the vasodilatation by alpha adrenergic receptors during sympathetic stimulation. Let us look at how body responds to hemorrhage. When there is hemorrhage, there is decrease in arterial pressure. This is opposite of high blood pressure we just talked about. When there is decrease in arterial blood pressure, yeah, it leads to firing of the arterial baroreceptors. This leads to a decrease in parasympathetic response which leads to an increase in heart rate and there is a increased sympathetic response which also increases the heart rate and it also increases the stroke volume, contractility and venous return which leads to improvement in cardiac function. Again, as I already mentioned, the sympathetic uh, discharge acts on the venous system by causing base venoconstriction which leads to an increase in preload. Sympathetic uh, discharge also acts on the arterioles by causing vasoconstriction which increases the total peripheral resistance which eventually leads to restoration of uh, blood pressure towards normal. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a brief overview of the central nervous system control of cardiac function on a minute to minute basis. The signals are sent from various parts of the body including the aortic arch and the carotid bodies and the central nervous system is able to recognize changes in the blood pressure, changes in the pH changes in oxygen saturation and the changes in carbon dioxide and respond appropriately minute by minute uh, to restore homeostasis. Thank you so much for watching. I am Dr. Nick Nickam and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you next time. You may be wondering my dress that is because it is snowing outside here in Texas. You would not believe that. We will see you next time. Thank you so much.